And one more time for good measure. Sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second. All perfect. If you're watching this video, you probably already know what rev matching is or what heel toe downshifting is. If you don't, I'm going to link in the description Engineering Explains video who did a phenomenal job explaining essentially what it is. If you don't know what it is and you just want really, really simple explanation, I'll give it to you right now. When you shift, and let's say downshifting for example, when you downshift, you need to match your engine speed to your transmission speed. So what you need to do is you need to get your engine revs up. Getting these engine revs up allows you to let out the clutch and get into gear very smoothly because your engine speed is going to match your transmission speed. And if you're upshifting, it's actually the opposite. So when you shift up, you actually need your engine speed to fall down for the next gear. And you might hear people on the internet complain about a car. This car actually specifically has some of this rev hang, where when you shift up, the revs kind of still stay hanging high, higher than they should be. So when you let out the clutch and get into the next gear, it's a little jerky and it's not right. So anyway, layman's terms, that's what it is. Go check out his video if you want a very good explanation. Now let's get into this video. Now you saw the title of this video, you know what it's gonna be about, but let me give you a brief rundown of what I'm doing here. So I own two cars, if you don't know me, I have a 2015 WRX that does not have auto rev match, and I also own a 2017 370Z Nismo, which does have auto rev match. So starting in the WRX, I've had this car for five years and it's had no auto rev match, which means I have to do the rev matching myself. Well, how does that work? When I downshift, like I'm doing right here, I have to roll onto the throttle to make sure that the shift is smooth when I downshift. When I upshift, hopefully the revs fall and I can get into the next gear smoothly. Now, let me say there are few things as satisfying as getting a perfect heel toe downshift. Um, when you are going into a turn and you are going hot, and you hit the brakes hard and then you roll your foot and you hit the gas and you rev perfectly and let it out, it is fantastic. I've been doing it for five years. Now, trust me, not all of them are perfect. You miss it a lot of the time, you don't get it perfect. But when you do get it perfect, it is extremely satisfying. And in this car, I actually am pretty good at it. So heel toe downshifting, what it means is you're putting your toe on the brake and you're rolling your heel to hit the gas when you brake. Now, I don't roll my heel. I actually do toe toe downshifting is what I'd call it. I use my big toe on the brake and I use my pinky toe on the gas and I do that. And that's how I roll and get the downshifts with the rev matches. Either way, this doesn't matter. Just telling you what I do. Some people do heel toe, I do more of a toe toe. But let's get back into this. An, an important part about heel toe downshifting or rev matching is having good pedal placement. These pedals in this car, the WX are suspended and that means they're all hanging from above and they need to be placed where the brake pedal is close to the gas pedal. At the same time, you want that gas pedal to be forward enough so that when you are braking, it's almost even parallel with the gas pedal so you can roll nicely, like so. So I'm in fourth gear now, and if I wanna downshift, I can do clutch in, brake, roll, third gear. I over revved that a little bit, but it helps with the transition of getting the, letting the clutch out and getting into the new gear. So again, you saw the title of this video, and to continue it, I need to get into my Z because I did a little experiment when I got my Z, which was about four or five months ago with the rev matching, because in the Z, you can turn on auto rev match where the car will do all the blipping of the throttle for you. Now, to wrap up the WRX, again, I've had this for five years and I've had no problem heel towing this car. Um, the pedals are placed exactly where I like them and it's been completely fine with heel toe downshifts and with the rev matching. And I'm very used to this car and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, when I got my Z, I did a little experiment of trying it both ways. So essentially let's hop in and I can talk about that. All right, we're now setting off in the Z. And let me just say that getting action cams into the footwells of these cars is near impossible with the Z being pretty much impossible to the point where it's probably a horrible angle. So I apologize for that, but that is the best angle I could get for the footwell. All right, so for the experiment that I was talking about, I'm gonna start with rev matching off. And so I have to blip it myself just like in the WRX. Now, like I was saying in the WX, the pedals were suspended, which I liked because the pedal was parallel with, the gas pedal was parallel with the brake pedal when I was heel toe rev matching. Now, if you can see in the Z, it is the pedal is actually floor mounted and then tilts forward. And it's actually very hard for me to get a good toe to toe downshift rev match with big toe and little pinky toe on the right. 
Now, heel toe in this car is probably easier for people who like the heel toe because it's floor mounted. But because it's floor mounted for me, the top part of the pedal is very deep into the cavity of the footwell that I can't really blip my toe around and get a good heel toe in this. So to my experiment, what did I do? Well, when I first got this car for the first about two days, I left it in the automatic rev matching mode because I've never had it before and that's what a big feature of this car. So I left it in that mode and I didn't really like it after two days. So for the next two months, I left it off and I did just like how I always have in the WRX. I did all my own rev matching, all my own heel and toes and my heel and toes never got better. I can rev match where if you got a downshift, blip the throttle without braking, you can, that wasn't a good one, but you can still rev match it fine. I just can't do the heel toe in this car. So I did that for about two months and I just can never get it down. So after two months, I came in, I pressed the button and I turned it back into the auto rev match mode, which is S mode in this car. And after a little getting used to, I absolutely love it. The fact that every single downshift, like right now, third gear, perfect. Second gear, perfect. Every time it's perfect and it's awesome. Now don't get me wrong, doing your own heel toe and hitting it perfect is very satisfying. But the fact that it does it every time in this car, I just absolutely love it. Now there are people out there who probably think it's blasphemy to do this, but honestly, it's more fun. And that is my ultimate conclusion, is that it is more fun. Now, why is it more fun is probably the question you're asking. Here's why. When you can go into windy roads, this one's a little bit windy, where you're always changing gears and you have to rev match every shift and you're missing half of them, it takes away some of the fun when you can't rev match it perfectly every time. In this, I feel like a race car driver. I am constantly throwing gears around as often as I want and it rev matches perfectly every time. And so that is the ultimate reason why I will not go back to manual rev matching if a car has auto rev match. Now my WRX doesn't have it, so I'll obviously be auto rev matching, but that is the reason why is race car driver. I swear you feel like Superman when you can throw shifts around so fast all the time and they're perfect. The balance of the car never gets upset because it's always a perfect shift every time. And I know some of you may disagree with me and say, well, it's way better to do it yourself. I get it, that's fine. I think it is a preference. But my preference is the race car driver preference and it just feels so awesome, all the downshifts. Like right now, fifth, fourth perfect, third perfect, second perfect. And I'm just throwing shifts around all the time. It's so much fun when there's traffic, when there's other stuff, not driving dangerously in traffic, but when you have to throw shifts around, I don't know. I just can't explain why it's so satisfying, but it is. So before we go, there's a couple quirks you have to know, at least in this car. Different cars might have different rev matching, what's the word I'm looking for, um, tuning. So in this car, what it does is you have a gated shifter that is the H shifter, but it's you know three rows, three vertical rows of shifts. When you go into neutral in this car, put the clutch in and go into neutral, it will always rev to the highest gear in that vertical row. So that may sound confusing, but let me try to explain it. You're in highway, you're on the highway in sixth gear. You put the clutch in and bring it to the neutral position in the gear shifter to the middle. It's automatically gonna rev for a, 4, 000, for a fourth gear RPM shift. So it's gonna pre-think or guess where you're going next. So if I'm in the middle row of the three, row, or three columns, if you think of this as columns, if I'm in the middle column, it's always gonna rev for fourth gear until I'm below the RPMs necessary for fourth gear and then it just goes down all the way to neutral. So let me explain this again. Say you're in fourth gear, same situation, and you wanna go to second, but you're not gonna go into it yet and you put the car in neutral and you bring the shifter all the way to the left and you hold it there and you don't go in first or second, you just hold it on the left. It will rev as if you're gonna go into second and wait for you to go into second. It tries to guess what gear you're going in based on where the shifter is vertically within your shifting shift gate. So it's just something to get used to and it's not a huge deal. The time where it's most annoying or where you notice it the most is on the highway when you just wanna throw it in neutral because you wanna coast into an exit. So I throw it in neutral and it automatically, because the gear shifter goes in the center, it automatically revs you as if you're gonna go into fourth gear. So let's say that's probably 4,500 RPMs on the highway if you're coasting down. So it goes to 4,500 RPMs, sits there for about two seconds waiting for you to go into fourth. And if you never go into fourth, then it falls all the way down to your normal idling of 800 RPMs, 1,000 RPMs. So again, not a huge deal, just something to note that was a little confusing when you start using this. And one more time for good measure, sixth, fifth, fourth, third, 
Second. All perfect. All right, guys, so that's it. I was in the WRX. I will always have to manually rev match that car and heel toe downshift that car because it doesn't have this. This car does. I went two months without using the rev match, and then I went two months with using the rev match, and I will not go back because race car driver. That's the conclusion right there. And I get it. If you have your own opinions and you think it's stupid, that's fine, but I love it this way. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.